So I'd like to show you now cockpit UI. This is quite a new one on me. Um, it's, a, it's a UI that lets you do really quite a lot of stuff with your server. Uh, just a very quick uh, introduction on how to install it. So edit etc apt sources.list. Make sure at the bottom that you have this line in your file and then do an apt update followed by apt install all this stuff um, and then you can check on the status of cockpit apparently mine's not working let's see if it is uh, it won't be let's do start okay um, now I'm on port 9090 and I use the same um, Username and password that I would to log into my system, my server, ordinarily. So, I mean, I think this looks kind of cool, to be honest with you. So, let's look at what we can do. And uh, straight off the bat, we have uh, a little network traffic graph, disk input output memory. Now, I kind of wish these graphs were not just live graphs, but they showed you history too. That that would be kind of cool, but I guess you can't have everything. Um, yeah, so you can look at this stuff. You can look at the system time. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna change my system time automatically using NTP. That was something I didn't know. Okay, <laughs> permission denied. I thought I'd set set it up so that it would work. Okay, I guess not. Um, I can look at some logs. I can look at the storage. Now this is quite a useful page for, for this article and this audience in particular. Um, it shows some really actually quite useful information. Uh, we're going through a bit of a heat wave in the UK at the moment so everything's still cooling down in my house for over the last few days. One of my drives got up to 50 Celsius where they normally sit between 30 and 35 so it's been jolly hot over here. Anyway. Uh, you can go and look at the disk on its own, get a bunch of information about it. Uh, apparently, user Alex is not permitted to manage storage. I wonder if uh, I go back over here. I've just clicked an unlocked button up there. I wonder now if I go back here. No. <laughs> uh, account settings. I wonder. Ooh, Alex is not permitted. Okay, that must be it. Unix group sudo. Okay, I need to put my account in the sudo group. Fine, I'll do that after the video. Um, looking at here, there's some information about all the different, um, so each Docker container gets its own bridge and uh, that then maps to the Docker interface. Yeah, kind of cool, you can see a lot of interesting stuff. Um, here's the uh, containers page, now this, this one is very, very useful and um, just gives a, a really quick overview of which containers are running where and doing what. Now, I can run a new version of uh, Debian from here if I want to. I can change, you know, lots of other stuff from a UI. Um, yeah, kind of cool, kind of useful. I think I'd stick with Docker Compose personally, but it's, you know, it's always good to sometimes to have more options. That, let's say you're, you need to get your wife in and get her to fix something for you. Uh, that's happened to me a few times where Plex is down and I, I've had to SSH it over my phone and try and do it that way instead of, uh, you, know, you know, go to this UI and then click here and click there. I think that could be a bit of a boon. Um, I don't do any virtualization on this host, but you could control KVM from here. Uh, accounts we've seen this page um, I don't have a root password so that could be interesting services uh, yeah again useful we can look at the status of each service and it'd be better if it showed the logs but hey I guess it's not going to do that uh, okay so that is a quick overview of cockpit I kind of like it um, I don't think I'll actually use it that much because I just like the command line. <laughs> but, you know, I think it'll be useful for some people. Um, so let's take a quick look at uh, Portainer next, which is um, a Docker container focused 
web UI. Now, all you need to do to install Portainer is add the following snippet to your Docker Compose file. So I think on here, I've got now to type. Uh, I can, I think I've already, already set it up. Yeah, Portainer's already there, port 9000. So let's go back over here and check out Portainer next. Is it HTTPS? No. Okay, so as admin, I'm gonna log in and here is the uh, main user interface. I've added an endpoint, which I've just uh, shared the Docker socket. Massive security risk again. Um, not something you wanna do lightly, so uh, yeah. There are other ways around it. You can connect over TLS to the Docker engine if you prefer, but this one was quick and easy to get set up for this demo. So, right, what are we looking at? We've got a bunch of information about Docker versions, CPU counts, memory. Um, we can look at the containers that are actually running. Kind of useful, I guess. So if we look at sync, maybe. Um, hopefully there's some stats here. Oh, again, they're not live stats. They are live stats, I mean. It would be so great if we just had like an RRD graph or something that went back over the last 10 hours or 12 hours or something. Oh well, it gives you real time, I guess, information on the containers. Kind of useful. You can stop, start, kill, blah, 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 blah. Add a container. Okay, it's kind of useful, this thing. It's got a bunch of... Yeah, I suppose it's most useful to new guys that want to, who don't know what the options are that they're looking for, and they need they just need them presented to them, you know, to jog the memory. So I guess it, I guess it's got its place. Networks again. There's a bunch of information about Docker networks. So I won't go into that here. Um, different volumes. So this is how Docker containers persist. All of their information. Oh wow, okay, lots of information about the Docker engine, user management, registries, I don't use any of this. Uh, and the last thing I wanted to show off is Portainer's um, application templates. Now, this is quite cool for us, we're the first featured um, app template provider. So, Portainer make a bunch of boring business ones like Nginx and, you know, SQL server and things like that. You might actually use in the real world Jenkins um, for work, but you know we're we're doing this for fun at home. So uh, there's a bunch of other stuff that we make. Go and have a look at the different categories. I think all of our containers are in here. Uh, so let's look at network web, and you can see that you know Light G, for example, is a photo management tool. It gives you a nice little description. You can give it a name, you can give it the user and group IDs and stuff like that. And yeah, this is, you have the ability to go in and modify all the different volume mappings and stuff like that from a user interface and deploy a container. Yeah, it's great. It's kind of useful. It's not something for me personally, but I think it will definitely prove useful for some of you in the community. So yeah, I think that brings us to the end of this video. So thank you very much for watching. Um, if you have any questions, I'm at Ironic Badger on Twitter, and uh, you can leave a comment on the article below or on the YouTube video, and I will try and get back to you. So, all right, thanks for watching.